Hello folks, reading the Bible tonight, and I've made it out of Luke and into John. And I'm in John 3, of course there's a lot going on in all of it, but for all those folks that seem to think there's another path to heaven besides through Christ, John the Baptist, who was absolutely filled with the Spirit, from even before he was born, he was filled with the Spirit. Um, talks to Jesus and puts his final say on it. Jesus is the path to salvation. So here we go. When, when you run into people that are determined there's another path, it's John 3. There's a lot going on in John 3, but let's start at John 3, 3. Uh, the Pharisees has named Nicodemus as a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, teacher, uh, we know you come from God, for no one can do the things that you can do, you know. But uh, he's basically questioning him, who are you? Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Of course, there's a lot of um, contention as to whether or not you have to be baptized. Here, Jesus is saying you need to be Except Christ is your Savior, which is born of water and the Spirit. Except Christ is your Savior and be baptized. But if you think about it, the guy that was on the cross with him, that stood up for him, he didn't have the opportunity to be baptized unless you consider the rain that God sent as his baptism. But I don't know if he was dead at that point. But anyway. That which is born... Of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. I phrase that like a question. It's not. It's a statement. Nicodemus I think I'm saying it wrong. Answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, or do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know, and we testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. So Jesus is saying, You're calling me a liar, kind of, or you just don't believe me. Don't call me a liar. You just don't believe me. If I have told you earthly things, you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, and that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life there it is right there that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life golly god loves us so much he gave his own son for God did not send his Son into the world to contemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, he hates what he does, but he loves us so much, he's given us a path to salvation. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he to, who does not believe is condemned already. It's like that person sitting on the fence can't decide whether to go to heaven or you know choose evil 
and then heaven disappears and Satan comes and gets him off the fence and says you're already mine. Not choosing is the same. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they say have been done in God. And this is true. Whenever you're doing evil things, people tend to hide in the shadows, so to speak, or they, although lately they've been coming right out and saying it, they don't bother to hide anymore. But people that don't lie and don't cheat and don't steal, they just don't have anything to hide, so they're all, they do all things out in the open. And doing right is frequently done in God, especially if you believe. And then, of course, John the Baptist has a big thing, another section here where he's talking about, you know, talking to God. And, you know, he's like, he must, in he must increase, then I must decrease. Because he knows that as good as he is, Jesus is better. And he's the one to send to prepare the way for Jesus. So, over here in John three forty four, not forty four thirty four. It's hard to read it through my phone. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. He doesn't give it piecemeal is what that means he doesn't give it in bits and pieces either you have the spirit in full measure or you don't there's no part way the father loved the son and given all things to his hand the father loved the son and given all things to his hand god loves jesus and he gave him everything he and he is to inherit everything he who believes in the son has everlasting life and he who does not believe in the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abides on him i sure would hate to receive the wrath of god myself so for anybody like i said that does not believe that christ is the only path to salvation john the baptist tells us and Jesus' own words tell us he is the only path to salvation. He is the only path to heaven. You have to accept him as your Savior and be born again in the Spirit of God. Basically, you're reconnecting your spirit to God and Jesus will inherit the kingdom. So if you want to be in the kingdom, you gotta accept Christ as your Savior. And it sounds so onerous, but it's really not. It's a wonderful blessing. And anybody that hasn't been saved and hasn't accepted Christ as your Savior, I invite you absolutely to accept Christ as your Savior because it is such a wonderful place in your mind, in your heart, and your soul for Jesus to be a part of it because He never, ever, ever let you down sometimes we expect more than we should our expectations are unrealistic or it turns out they'll be unhealthy for us but he never let you down we let ourselves down so i hope this helps some folks because things are getting kind of rough for christians lately and i don't mean christian as a as a religion so much as a follower of christ and a believer in christ and someone who has accepted Christ as their Savior, somebody who's been born again. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic or Methodist or Protestant or, or whatever, so long as you believe that Christ is the path to salvation and you accepted Him as your personal Savior so that you can get your spirit reconnected with, your gut, with God. So, 
don't waste time doing this. Get baptized. It takes like a minute to go do it and it's wonderful. You just feel this instant connection of joy and light and love and it'll carry you through your whole life. I hope this helps you and I hope that that you can if you haven't found your way to Christ that you find your way to Christ if, and if you're already there I hope this helps you feel good about your choice if you don't already and anyway I I, I really like this chapter I'm just kind of rambling now because I enjoyed it so much so thanks for joining me and I hope to see you next time and another train kind of long and I apologize and be blessed <laughs>